This is our transport for the day. Yeah. An interesting day today, lots of places to see. About 15 minutes walk from the hotel along the road, we come to a bridge. And uh, we're just coming up to it on the, uh, on the boat. Turn left here, this bridge goes right away up to the main road. It's quite long. And the main road is up there. The bridge comes all the way down here. ends at this point. They're called floating villages, but strictly speaking they are. They're, uh, they're on piles driven into the uh, driven into the bed of the lake. They're not like uh, rafts. Like you get on uh, Lake Titicaca and other places. Everybody going about their, their daily business. Well, there's a bit more chop on the water today. Uh, Gently, gently, <laughs> covered in sprit. Although there is an umbrella, everybody has an umbrella you can put in front of you. And you stop yourself from becoming wet. There is a blanket you can cover yourself with to keep yourself warm. These guys are hanging around waiting for tourists. Yeah. <laughs> Show them the, their uh, rowing technique. Oh, you're a young lad, this one, ain't you? They don't do this, really. I, God, I'd love for you to fall in, mate. I really would. So this is a quick demonstration, actually, for tourists. Give them a tip. There's the older guy there. Yeah, yeah. I, I got caught. You did? No worries that we can catch out I am one through everyone. We don't want the balancing act, mate. We want to see you using that. Now you can see that. I'll come here and I'll come it. I'll come it. Come, come. I'll come it. Catching the fish. That's how deep the lake is there. That goes down to the bottom. Then they haul it out. There's nothing in it. All these fishermen using this strange technique for their lake. in this village. Okay. 
Yeah, look at this electricity board here. It's absolutely <laughs> a work of art. So this lady comes from the Paduan history. These are the long neck women. And this is a little bit of information about that. <laughs> the reason for them wearing these was to deal with protection against tigers, but there are a lot of tigers in Myanmar now. So they wear them around. The tigers tend to grab you by the neck or the wrist. And uh, this prevents the tiger from from throttling you, which, which is what tigers do. They grab their prey by the throat and essentially strangle it. And this is supposed to prevent that. Yes, that's nice. But it weighs a ton. And they, they never take them off. They even sleep in them. So these are the, uh, the rings which they wear. I thought it was tubing, but it's not. It's solid rod. So this lady is wearing this long neck, which is about nine kilos. And she also has on her arms another great mass, which she brings across her chest to stop the tiger attacking. Also, around the knees, and all this lot weighs a ton. And they never take it off. And here are these little rings. And there's a lock. And when she goes to sleep, or when she wants to sleep, she just moves these round to the front. And she's got this wonderful headdress on. And these beautiful scarves, beautiful colours. And these little jewels and little bits in. And this wonderful haircut. Fringe, and then this lovely tassel hanging down there. And it doesn't, the, uh, they don't elongate the neck, these. What they do is they push down on the shoulders, so you end up with a, a shallower chest, which seems a bit bizarre. But today, it's not compulsory. Today, girls can uh, opt to do it. Uh, as part of tribal custom, or they can choose not to do it. But uh, it is quite magnificent. Wonderful. Smile. This lady is weaving. And this lady is uh, making uh, thread. Sleep. So we've come to this pagoda on Inlay Lake and uh, you have to pay for camera and video. It's not a lot. For a video it's 50 pence, for a camera it's 30 pence. You want any giant bridges? Two more of these, folks. 
maybe they are prohibited from going in there. They are identical. These three are enormous. Look at the size of that. There's another one over there, the same size. How many people can you get in there? A lot. <laughs> Here they're cutting planks from this piece of wood. It's teak, obviously, in Myanmar. And there's a chap on the top, and I'm assuming there's a bloke on the bottom. And they cut these long teak planks. This guy is using a smoothing plane to take it off the, uh, the rough saw cut. This shows how straight grain the wood is. This guy is just using what seems like an ordinary black plane just to take the top edge off. This wood they use for making these little pins for joining the planks together is called. Dinya. Dinya. And it's not affected by the water at all. And they make one day uh, or join the planks together with that. And for one of the smaller boats, it takes about a month to make it. The bigger ones, like this one here, obviously take a bit longer. And if you wanted to buy that boat there, this one here in the foreground, it's about $3,000. It seems peanuts to me, and it takes, as I say, it takes about a month to uh, to make it. They vary from this small skiff. This small boat. It's black painted, it's almost like lacquer. So this is it. Which is... Uh, Really, really big. And they're all handmade. I don't say handmade, but they do use machine tools. But, uh, it's all bracing bits and. I think this guy's using the offcuts to make uh, little, uh, little dishes like those containers down there. He's got a couple of lads watching him. Let's come to this weaving place. Hand weaving. The tent is kept on the threads with these great big pans full of uh, what looks like car bitumen all the way up there. But... It's all bamboo and string. And the thread is made from the lotus plant. Should be thrown backwards and forwards just by the act of the right hand. You can see it there. And the feet operate in the pedals. 